proud to be here again, not only as America's top diplomat, but also as a man of faith. One topic that was not publicly discussed was the much-anticipated Middle East peace plan, the so-called deal of the century, which is being negotiated by the president's advisor and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, as detailed in a new book out this week. Journalist Vicki Ward interviewed over 200 people about Kushner and his plan to end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. According to the author, some of Kushner's proposals include... Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates providing economic assistance to the Palestinians. There are plans for an oil pipeline from Saudi Arabia to Gaza creating work for Palestinians. Kushner is also proposing a multi-country land swap, which would include Jordan giving land to the Palestinians in return to Jordan getting land from the Saudis. So the alleged plan would involve at least five countries renegotiating boundaries in a politically and spiritually convoluted region. And the proposal does not require the Netanyahu government in Israel to make any significant concessions. Joining us now is Ken Delvecchio, Republican strategist and attorney, and Spencer Critchley, Democratic strategist and communications advisor for President Obama's presidential campaigns. Uh, Ken, Palestinians and even some Israelis say this deal is dead on arrival. Uh, why shouldn't we believe that? Uh, look, I have a lot of issues with this. First of all, the reporting in this book has been debunked by uh, multiple people in the White House. That said, uh, hey, maybe Jared Kushner is a fan of baseball and likes three-way trades, and maybe that was the genesis of his idea. But the way that I understand the idea sounds pretty cool. Uh, Jordan gives some land to the Palestinians, and then in turn, Saudi Arabia gives some land uh, to Jordan. And then uh, Jordan gets back a couple islands that uh, Egypt has been overseeing. And now maybe this all works out for all of them. We don't know what parcels of land are being discussed here. And there probably is some significant economic benefit for them through this pipeline that's going to Gaza. So this all may make a lot of practical sense. And I'm not about to rebuke it without having more information. Kushner's a pretty smart guy. Uh, apparently this is a major passion of his. And I think it makes some sense. Spencer, uh, does it make sense to avoid any criticism until it's actually rejected? In other words, I mean, nothing has worked in, in the past, obviously. There has been no peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis. So why not say, okay, let Jared Kushner try something that sounds different? I think we always have to remain open to being pleasantly surprised, uh, but we don't know what this plan is yet. And apart from the merits of the plan, I think the first question really here is, why does Jared Kushner have any role in this process whatsoever? And I'll use a sports metaphor as well. It's kind of like sending me in to be the quarterback for an NFL team. The first question should not be, what play do you want to call? It's, what are you doing on the field? Jared Kushner has no qualifications in his background, and he doesn't have any kind of record of success that would lead us to think we should have confidence in him. And furthermore, he's the president's son-in-law. If you compare the level of talent that President Obama turned to, people like George Mitchell uh, at the beginning of his presidency and throughout, he did not go to his kids. Ken, how about it? I mean, he's a guy who doesn't have any Middle East experience. He is the president's son-in-law. He doesn't have a vast record of putting together this kind of stuff. I'm going to have to refute that. Look at our pr recent presidency in the United States. Donald Trump, who I'm a big fan of, he didn't have any direct political experience. Barack Obama had nil political experience. A lot of people loved what Barack Obama did. I didn't agree with his policies, but the man was an, is an incredibly intelligent individual. Jared Kushner, by all accounts, is incredibly intelligent. What, what, let, me, let, me, let me think about this. Bobby Kennedy. Everybody said he had no experience whatsoever. History says that he was a great attorney general. But to Spencer's point, when you have had a George Mitchell who has spent a lifetime trying to understand the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, why does it make sense to have somebody who's a rookie at this at best? I think it makes a lot of sense because sometimes people with the greatest talent, natural intelligence that have made themselves their own historians can deliver great results. They're not mired in the bureaucracy. They're not mired in the politics. And Donald Trump made a decision to put him in this position. He's also got other great advisors that are around him. Look, every ambassador that the United States points to the various hundreds of countries around the world, they don't have any experience either in the vast majority of them. Except they're not being asked to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But I take your point, and Spencer, to the point that, look, maybe it's a good thing that he's the president's son-in-law because everybody knows that he is speaking directly for the president of the United States when either he makes some concessions or negotiations or puts the plan out there. 
People know that as well in a professional administration that's being run by professionals according to professional principles. You shouldn't have to rely on a royal family in order to trust your advisors. This is one of the key flaws in the Trump administration is he apparently doesn't seem to trust anybody except his immediate family. I also would uh, dispute that President Trump is any kind of argument for lack of experience leading to good results. I know we could probably argue that one back and forth. Um, a bigger point there, though, I think, is this is a common fallacy. Given that experts do sometimes make mistakes and experts do sometimes fail, it doesn't logically follow that, therefore, we should turn to people with no expertise whatsoever. I think this is part of the motivation that led to the election of President Trump in the first place, which was people were so frustrated with a system they thought was not working for them, which I would uh, understand in many ways. They thought, let's just hit it with a hammer and see I, what happens. I think, I think now, unfortunately, I, I, we're seeing what happens. I think, I think you're mistaken in your philosophy about this. Your sports analogy does make sense within sports. Uh, and experts, you don't want a brain surgeon working on a car and you don't want a car mechanic working on somebody's brain. But we're not talking about something that's in that realm. Understanding foreign policy, understanding history is a completely different type of expertise. And Jared Kushner could be expertise at the highest level. All of the reading that I've done and this goes to liberal authors and conservative authors of articles, say that Jared Kushner actually is highly expertised in foreign policy, specifically relating to Israel. Now, you might disagree with his positions, and, you, and, and that might be a valid point for somebody who thinks along the lines you do. I might agree with his positions. Well, That's a valid point that I have. Well, Spencer, how about it? I mean, he does, it does seem like Kushner has developed some personal relationships that could be crucial in all this. Uh, some very disturbing personal relationships, including with MBS in Saudi Arabia. One of the deep concerns here, no matter how intelligent Jared Kushner is or is not, and I think there's some alarming evidence to the contrary on that score, is not just the impropriety of having close personal family members who have no relevant background appointed to positions of great power. Somebody, by the way, who could not get a security clearance. I think you just uh, don't like him. I think you just is, don't like him. I don't well, think you, whether we like him or not and whether he should be qualified to have a security clearance, that's a no, debate it, for a different day. But we got to end it here. Kendall Vecchio, Spencer you know, Trishley. I have a feeling we're going to have this conversation again, perhaps soon. We appreciate you both coming, coming in. Coming up in Iowa, some harrowing moments and remarkable video during a house fire. That's ahead.